I want to welcome you to our first dream job webinar of the new academic year. And we thought we'd start off with a really awesome topic and guest. We have Aaron Hill, senior editor from People Magazine covering the British royal family. How cool is that? <laughs> You've seen her work in grocery aisles nationwide <laughs> <laughs> by now. You didn't know who she was or who's behind it, but here, here's the face bringing <laughs> you all the British royal family news. And we're going to dive into that conversation, learn all about her job and her path to get there, what she learned along the way in school and in her earlier job. We're going to get into all of that. And we'll also have the chance for you and your students to ask questions. So start thinking of your questions for Aaron, and we will um, get those going. Before we start in our into our conversation, I want to bring everybody up to speed on our company, Ruben, and I should have introduced myself, I jumped past that. I'm Danny. For those who are new here, I'm the founder of our company, and our company is called Ruben, and we provide online resources to help students with their communication skills. Teachers, can I see a show of hands? How many of you have read an email from a student or a teacher or parent, and that email looked like a text message? Any hands up for emails that looked like they were text messages? lowercase letters, slang. Our team's been hard at work and we developed a resource to help you and your students with their email etiquette. And I want to show you very quickly how it works and give you an opportunity to use this tool for free this fall. We already have several school divisions around the country using this product right now and seeing great results, helping students write emails more professionally. So let me very quickly show you and explain what this tool does. It's called Propel, and it's an extension for Gmail and Outlook. Can you all put in the chat what you use with your what your students use, Gmail or Outlook? Tell me in the chat. Is it Gmail or Outlook? Outlook, Outlook, Gmail, Outlook. What else we got? One or the other. Gmail. Okay. So this tool is for both. And I'm just going to do a very quick demonstration of how this works. The student in either platform, Outlook or Gmail, will come to their email environment and they will click compose. And before they can write the message, we present the student with a box where they fill in all the parts of an email on their own. It's not an AI tool. It is about students doing their own writing, but guiding them to write professionally. So we have them write a subject line with an example, address the person properly, include a greeting, explain why you're writing. I have a question about my geometry assignment. Do you have any supporting information? I'm stuck on problem three. Make sure you have a conclusion and make sure you sign your name. So the students complete the form. And it, when they hit review my email, the work that they produce is placed into the email. But if we look at this email, there's a lot of problems. How many of you have seen a student call you bruh in an email? Anybody bruhs in here? Or hey, teacher, hey, miss, hey, man, hey, dude. So as soon as the words they write land in the email, we analyze on the side and give students immediate feedback on what they wrote. For example, Bruh is slang and not professional. Remove bruh. But we're not going to remove it for them. They have to come over and delete it. And then we say, while you're doing that, consider a formal title. Or we shouldn't use multiple question marks. That's aggressive. We need to capitalize our lowercase i's. We should not use all caps. We should not use other slang. So we are helping the student write the email but we are making the student do all the work and all the revisions. And that's when the learning happens and you'll see very quickly the improvement in the student's email. So this is a very quick demonstration of how it works. And I want to offer right now in the chat, okay? If you would like access to this tool to try it, use it in a classroom, no cost, okay? I want you to go to this link in the chat right now, 
And I want you to book a, a time, a 10 minute meeting with our team, the Ruben team to meet with us on your schedule. And we will give you access to this tool that you can share with students. The schedule you'll see on that calendar tool is for the next week. So pick a time on your schedule and meet with us and we'll give it to you. Okay, if you have any questions, Alexis is there in the chat to answer. Okay. Make sure that, okay, there you go. And I'll share the link again if anybody needs. All right, with that, let's turn our attention to our special guest for today, Ms. Erin Hill. Thank you again for taking time out of your busy day yeah. to meet with us. Start a, by telling us. I, sorry, I was going to say, Dave, that is an a, amazing tool and one that um, I think I know people who can use that tool. <laughs> we hear that a lot. <laughs> We're very excited about it. We think it can make a serious impact on students. And that gets us to our conversation today, because what we do when we're younger, what we work on, what we practice may end up becoming our career. And that's certainly been mm -hmm. your case. As long as I've known you, we've been friends a long time. You've always been interested in this space. Mm -hmm. So let's start. Tell, tell us your quick bio. Mm -hmm. or take us through the, the years a little bit. Yeah, sure. Bring us up to today. And then we'll start diving into your job. Yeah. Um, well, first off, so um, I'm Erin Hill, and I am the Senior Royals Editor for People Magazine, and I've been at this role for about 10 years. Um, I guess I'll kind of go back to the beginning. I guess, as you said, um, Danny and I know each other from school, from being very young, and so from the earliest age, I was always interested in reporting and journalism and in words and magazines and reading. I was just always, you know, head in a book and and writing. And so getting into school and as soon as probably middle school is when there were clubs and things I could join to really kind of put some of that interest um, in, into action. Um, I was always on the yearbook staff, any school newspaper, um, always sort of volunteering to be the one to take notes or whatever it is for club meetings, things like that, um, putting out newsletters, um, and uh, I remember one of my very first interviews I ever did was um, for my high school, for my middle school newspaper um, was about kids using the bus, taking the bus to school. And I interviewed a bunch of kids getting on the bus. What is it like to take a bus to the bus to school? And just so seeing that's kind of where I started. Now here I am interviewing some of the, the most amazing kind of figures in our pop Famous culture. Famous people on earth. <laughs> is is pretty pretty amazing and it all kind of just started with an interest in people ironically now here I am at, at people but um, continue with those activities throughout uh, middle school high school into college joining all the student publications that I could um, local magazines um, community magazines I went to school at James Madison University in Harrisonburg Virginia and so Go the Dukes yeah, that's right. And the local um, Harrisonburg um, like lifestyle magazine, uh, I was able to kind of get an internship there through my major. And so just really kind of exploring everything I could. Um, and then I did an internship my junior year of, of college that took me to New York. And I worked for a wedding magazine called The Knot. It's also a pretty well-known wedding website. Who's heard of The Knot before? I've heard of that. Basically, anybody who's, who gets married, they're they're on the knot. Um, and it was a great opportunity. It was my first time ever going to New York City um, and experience experiencing a city and a lot of different people coming from all over the country with different interests. It was a great internship program. And I made great connections there. And there are a lot of things um, that I hope to kind of share during this talk that I did during that short internship that led mm. to where I am now. Sure. Um, and skills that I learned from that great internship program that I still use. And um, from that job, I got another job at um, a publication called Parade Magazine. I did a lot of um, entertainment, celebrity interviews there. And then the dream job was always people. And so I did a few other freelance things in between for different magazines, different sort of um, women's magazines, and then got myself at People. And... I was hired to be the human interest and Royals editor. And then a few years ago, a, a, a young couple named Prince Harry and Meghan Markle exploded Royals <laughs> for people. And I needed to concentrate fully on Royals. And that's been my focus for several years now. Fantastic. Uh, I see um, someone has a hand up. This would be the right opportunity to ask everybody 
to go now to the Q&A. And Tammy, I see your question too. I want you to move your question. There's a Q&A area along the bottom of Zoom. I want you to go there and put your questions for Aaron in that space. That's where we'll look through and pick out questions. So please go to the Q&A, put your question. And also, if you can remember, please put your school so we can give you and your school credit for the question. Okay. One thing I love about your bio, Aaron, is that you've been working on your writing for a long time. And as early as you can probably remember, mm -hmm. writing. And that led you all the way to a national publication, an international publication, where people all over the world read People Magazine and read about the royal family. Mm -hmm. So it, sh it shows that what you, the practice early on set you up for incredible experience in your career. Let's dig in on that internship you spoke about first in New York. What, what happened there that ended up propelling you forward? Yeah, and it's really a credit to the program that I was a part of um, at the time. They really had a lot of sessions and conferences and things during the time so we could make sure we made the most of the our internships. And um, I they had a, a great suggestion to go to the top person at the company, the person that has the job that you'd like one day. For me, it was the editor-in-chief of The Knot and ask to shadow them around for the day. And that was... Um, uh, pretty uh, intimidating for a young, you know, college student to go to someone Absolutely. in that company. But I found that it's such a rare thing, I think, for somebody to to do that, um, to to kind of put themselves out there like that. It was very well received. She had never been asked something like that, and was like, "Yes, of course." And so she made it. I told her assistant and get some time on her calendar before my internship ended. She took me around for a whole day and let me shadow her and see her work through meetings and layout meetings and things and phone calls. And we had lunch together and we got to talk and I got to learn more about her trajectory and how she got where she was. And that was just such a, a crucial um, uh, a piece of advice I had. And I kind of used that throughout my career and um, asking, even when I'm in a job, seeing somebody else who has a um, a job in a different position, like, can I can I learn more about what you do? And mm. um, so that was really, really good. And then also um, establishing contacts. I wasn't going to, I was there for just a short time, but I made sure to um, kind of get to know the people that I was working with that were, that had full-time jobs there and stay in touch with them after I left. I still had another year of college at that point. And I'd email them throughout the year and check on their work and see how they're doing. And because um, my goal was to get hired by them when I graduated the following year. And also I volunteered to uh, freelance for them unpaid. Um, at the time I was still in college and they didn't offer any sort of paid freelance to college students. So I said I wanted to do it for free to just get the bylines. And I will say for anybody interested in writing, um, sometimes out the gate, like just to get a byline is just so, so important just to like build a resume. What is um, a byline? So bylines is your name on any piece of, of writing and Bylines are just something that you carry with forever. Um, wherever you go um, to any publication, you you have your bylines, and it's very important to writers um, to have um, varying bylines from different um, outlets to show your sort of range. And if you want to specialize in a certain type of writing, whether it's technical writing or entertainment writing or hard news, or just to show that you have um, experience in that way. So it's it's like um, a very tangible um, thing to have, uh, even even better than a resume, I think, sometimes. Um, and and then also, um, so yeah, so having the bylines and establishing contacts, trying to find a mentor, all those things um, really, I think, paid off. And for a lot of industries, and certainly for media, it's such a, it ends up being such a small world. And once you work with one publication with, with a group of people, those people go off and do other things, and you end up seeing them down the line at different places. They remember you, or they know someone who worked with you. And yep. so- it's a lot of hard work, but it's also who you know. And I think that's for a lot of industries is just establishing context, maintaining, maintaining relationships and um, uh, yeah, keeping those relationships going. I want uh, thank you for that. I want to go back to 
one part of your answer, which was that you went up to the person whose job you would love to have one day. And you said, can I basically, can I follow you around? Can I shadow you? Mm -hmm. I want the students to understand how powerful that is. And we talk about this a lot in our webinars that if you, if you went up and asked that person, can I have a job? They would have, it would have completely ignored you or not just handed you something because you asked, but you said, can I learn from you? Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, what can you do for me? You said, can I learn from you? And right. the, the, the simple change in that question led to that person taking you around all day Yeah, and may have likely changed the path of your career. I think so. I mean Yes, learning absolutely. From and even if you're not in a position to do that, let's say you're not, you're not in a newsroom, you're not in a, a workplace or an office where you can do that. There are other ways um, to get that same idea. And I've done it too, going for other jobs throughout my career that um, different publications that I wanted to work for. I, and I knew they didn't have a job opening. So I reach out to the HR manager, email them would be helpful to have that tool you have right now, Danny, to email that HR manager at the time and say, you know, are there any job openings or whatever is listing? Oh, that's the, the job was filled. We don't have any more. Well, I'm not going to just stop there. Can I just get on the phone with you and have an informational interview? Ah. And there's no job that I'm going to get from it, but I still want to have a conversation. I want to establish a rapport. I want right. you to learn about me. I know I'm not going to get a job from it, but you might remember me when six months down the line, there's another job that comes up and hey, there's this person that was so interested in this company and this job. And I learned more about them through this interview and they asked very you know, thoughtful questions. And um, so that was just over the phone. I didn't have to be in the office asking for you know, this high profile person to shout them around. It was just, it was with an HR manager for a, pub a publishing house that I wanted to work for. And, and she was very glad H HR, um, I, I find like it, people in HR positions are very helpful and they really want to bring good people and to looking for the best people, people who are interested. So showing that you're going that extra step and you know, you're not going to get a job from it, but you still are showing interest, I think goes a long way. Fan fantastic. This is great advice. Sort of even before we dive into people, this is just great advice for how to navigate your way through an industry, any industry. Thank you for the answers. Uh, we have a lot of questions here. So let me get to some Tammy and the uh, high school. They want to know, um, did you ever write op-eds, like opinion pieces for newspapers or publications while you were in school? Not while I was in school. Well, let me see. No, the closest I got to that, I remember I did um, some music reviews in college for our newspaper, and I go see some local bands play and student bands, and I do kind of reviews. Okay. Um, but the, that was probably the closest I got to op-ed. I've done some op-ed style things. Um, later in my career, but not as a student. But I think those are really powerful too, establishing a voice yep. um, in that way. And um, it, those are, I mean, that great if you can do that uh, from that age. Thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Burdett and her students, Covington Middle School, seventh grade, Southwest Virginia. What made you decide to take your passion for journalism to magazines? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I think it's because I I just always loved reading magazines, going to the grocery store and seeing, or the airport or wherever it was, and seeing um, a magazine. I just I was drawn to them, and I loved just the the pictures and the articles and just how it all kind of came together. And um, so I I actually my major was. Um, print journalism. So I, I, I knew I wanted to go into sort of more of like a magazine style um, uh, industry, but as we all know, everything's online and digital. And certainly when I graduated in 2006 it, from college, it was becoming more and more. There were certainly lots of magazines, but their websites were kind of up and coming too. And so I kind of switched gears and was very much focused on new media. Um, working for the Knot, it's primarily they have a, like they have a, a physical magazine, but they have a really robust website. And I got to learn so much about the digital space and digital writing, and um, writing for websites. And so I did a, the the bulk of my career was as a digital editor and writer. But now yeah. at People, it's such a um, iconic sort of print brand and web and web. I do both. 
So I, I write for the magazine and I write for the website and it's such different styles writing for the magazine, more feature, use a different part of your brain. I feel to write and digital as you're writing for a digital reader, you're capturing them a little bit um, quicker and there's just a different sort of style. So it's two different styles. And, and so I like both. So I'm in a really great position where I get to write for both. Yeah. That not many get to have their foot in both places, you know, all the time. One more question from the chat, and then I want to get into People Magazine a bit. Shannon Hayward from UT Martin said, what, what is your style or your approach for taking notes during interviews? How do you capture important information? Yeah, it's a really good question. I definitely, um, I'm always recording too during um, an interview. I've got my recorder going. I have like a, an old school, like, you know, recorder, but also on your phone, of course, you can use voice memo and, and record. So I, I've got that as a backup. And then as I'm talking to the person, I like to be as engaged as I can during interview. So I don't want to be totally taking taking notes. Um, but if I hear something during a conversation that sparks like, oh, that's a good, that would be a good headline for this story, what they just said, or that's a quote that I think would really like that would jump out. I'll make like a note like that's, you know, that's the one. Or if I'm, if they're talking, they say something. I, I try, I feel um, like in interviews, I like to let the person speak as long as possible. I'm not interjecting as much. I let them go. I find sometimes you can get more out of people if you just kind of let them speak um, yes. and versus jumping in with the next question so fast. So I yes. I'll make a little note like, oh, they sparked something I want to ask them. I'm not going to interrupt right now, but I'm going to make a note to ask that later. Later. Um, does that answer that question or is it yeah, more about taking notes than other? No, I think, I think that's good. And uh, I understand that when I was a TV reporter, you know, like ask somebody the question, but like give them time and space yeah. to think of an answer. They, the, the, the thing they say after the pause might be the most interesting thing they totally. say, but you've got to let them get there. Exactly. And, and, and we talk about this a lot too, uh, when you're talking to a new person and you're getting to know them. You might come into the interview with a set list of questions, but if they say something interesting along the way, you're going to go mm -hmm. take a turn down that path and explore that, whatever they are sort of bringing up that they yeah. seem interested in talking about. Is that right? Yeah. And I think it's all, it's just like communication skills in general, um, just sort of being a good listener and picking up on cues. And yes. um, I think there's an art to that. And a lot of the times I've seen with young reporters I work with, they go in with like, I have to ask this these questions and they're so um, in their head about what they what they think the assignment is that they, like you said, they missed the story because it went somewhere else and it's better um, yep. because they were so like honed in on what, it, what they thought it had to be. They couldn't pivot. They couldn't right. change. So you, there's got to be... It's like we're talking now. It's like it's like very casual and fluid and you have to be able to kind of go with yep. it. And um, I think that's some of the the best skill, the best, the most skilled interviewers do that. Um, th thank you. Let's let's talk about the work that you do and People Magazine, which we've all seen it. We all know about it. And let's talk about how it all gets made to sure. whatever degree you can share your <clears throat> international royal secrets. So this was an article from yesterday mm -hmm. that you wrote about Kate Middleton uh, recovering from cancer treatment, Yeah. right? And so help me understand, how does this type of story come together? I mm -hmm. saw in the story that, you know, you're, you're linking to the Kensington, like the Royal family, like Twitter. So mm -hmm. how did you know about this story? How does it, yeah. how does it come to life? So, and that's a, a, another great thing about working in, in media in general, it's such, it's, there's a lot of teamwork. Um, and so this story that you see has my name, but there's a whole team behind me that helped get this, this whole story come together too. So the, and this is the same for all this. If you look yeah, who's at who's on the team, what's happening back yeah, there? Yeah. If you look at this, and this is the same for people, all of people, if you see it says entertainment, crime, human interest, lifestyle, royals, all. So we're all, um, so I'm on the I I run the Royals team, and so we're a staff um, of about it's a small staff relatively we're six or five or six people that we're purely focused on Royals news, and um, I have some some of my staff 
based in London, and they have longtime contacts um, with a lot of royal sources. We have great relationship with the communi communications team at Buckingham Palace and, and Kensington Palace. So for this story, for Kate, um, the Princess of Wales, announcing that her chemo is over and she's finished chemo and she's moving into the next phase of her recovery, it was breaking news um, throughout the um, a lot of news outlets a day. The New York Times issued like a breaking news alert about this and CNN and then us, of course. Um, we are in a unique position. We are one of the only, if not the only American outlet that has um, a direct line to the palace just from our longstanding relationship with them and from our, right. our reporters in the UK and um, our, our uh, chief um, foreign chief correspondent who's based there, Simon Perry. I work with him very closely. And he actually gets a heads up before this is being announced to the world, along with some other select um, uh, editors in the UK and writers in the UK. And so we knew about this message coming out, this video coming out, the news about an hour before it it when it was released to people to all over the world. And we got time to prepare it and um, uh, see the video before it was put out and then we were ready to to go. And um, it's we also have developed sources along the way. And that's like a little bit more getting into the weeds of what I do is de developing sources. And, and um, what's a source? What does that mean? A source is someone who you can call upon when you're doing a story for uh, to help um, give you an exclusive exclusive beat on something. Um, and um and whatever kind of is really going on in the news, it's about the sources. So it could be friends of whoever it is that's in the news, like a celebrity or um, like recently a big news story for people was um, Taylor Swift and Travis um, showing up at uh, you know, the re most recent game or whatever. She's very big for us. There are a lot of sources we have around her, um, friends, family friends, certain people she works with. And those are people we can call upon because a lot of these people are not going to talk to us right out the gate. Like Taylor Swift is not going to call us up and say, oh yes, I'm doing this X, Y, and Z. But her sort, but source as well, people around them. And that's how we get a lot of news. That's how we jump on breaking news stories for people. It's very much entertainment based. So it's a lot of, um, you know, breakups and babies and things like that. A lot of like lifestyle news for Royals. It's about the comings and goings of all the Royal family members. Um, so yeah, there it's a, there's an art to developing a source throughout the years. Mm. So interesting to get inside the process and understand <laughs> how this works. Can I, am I understanding that you learn about big moments from the Royal family before other American media? Yes. I mean, breaking, getting ahead of the New York Times and CNN is, that's it's not huge. for nothing. And, and sort of, the, our sort of motto, in, in certainly for online um, publishing, if you're not first, you're last. Um, it's all about being first. There's another side to online journalism, which is SEO. It's standard, um, it's a search engine optimization. So everything you write needs to be optimized for Google. So when you go to Google something, let's hear you hear, oh, Kate Middleton, something about cancer. What was that? And you Google Kate Middleton cancer. What's going to come up first? Right. I hope, I hope our story. And that's because we've optimized it. We were first. Google likes when you're first, the search engine itself. Um, we talk about Google like it's a person. Google likes when we're first. They like when we have a lot of links in there. They like when we're putting a lot of keywords, like names. And um, so everything we do is optimized so we can be the first to go out to everyone to read. So you're not just writing sort of just smart journalism writing. You're also thinking about writing for search engines at the exactly. same time. So you have to blend both. Yeah. It still has to be interesting enough. It's got to be to readable hear. and human. Right. Exactly. But hidden but, keywords. Yeah. Wow. This is really interesting. Uh, raise your hand if you're finding this pretty interesting because I know I am. <laughs> so. This is fascinating. Uh, we have a lot of more questions here in the chat. Let me get to a few more. What experiences do you recommend students pursue to practice listening skills? That's Amy Gehring from Upper Dolphin High School. We talked, you do a ton of listening in your job, listening for cues, taking conversations certain ways. How can we get better at our listening skills? Yeah, I think anytime um, you are able, able to be in a position where you can attend um, 
conferences or, um, um, you know, local, if local colleges or schools put on different events, like to go to listen to speakers. I think that's, it's very, um, kind of teaches some, some listening skills. I think, um, working one-on-one -on -one with your teachers, with your counselors, and even just, uh, you know, speaking to people in your, in your own life, um, just kind of sitting down and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I think one of the early assignments I had in school was to interview family members and to find out a little bit more about their lives and things you wouldn't normally ask them. And I think that's just like a good little exercise to kind of work on your listening skills and to kind of put together um, like an interview with, you know, somebody in, in your own life. Yeah, that's and, a good idea. And to um, kind of practice those skills. Thank you. There, there's a lot of questions now. You were all, you were all holding back on me. Now they're <laughs> coming out like rapid fire. So let me try to get to a few more. We have a couple of questions. Tammy Perez asked it and also Mike Shaper asked it about the rise of artificial intelligence. Uh, does that, are you concerned that, AI could do your job or is it so mm. nuanced and delicate with these back channel conversations that, right. that your job is secure, what you do will not go away. How, how does your team manage around AI? It's such a good question. And I think it's still being figured out. I don't think anybody knows yet. I think right now there's some, some excitement and, and optimism is one way to view it. Can it be a compliment to what we do? Can it help us? Um, I think similarly to your tool and like, it wasn't writing the email for you, but it was kind of guiding you. Suggesting. Is there a way where we can use AI for a similar, a similar way in our industry? Because I think the danger is, are you getting um, real factual news if it's just thrown into AI and what comes out? I think there's still going to need to be a human component in some way to make sure what's being regurgitated out is is accurate is right it is readable um and yep. then i something that sets the work i do apart is ai is not going to go interview somebody ai is not going to go to a source and get some exclusive right, information right, ai right. ai is not going to react to breaking news at least not right now um in the same way that um we would um so like chat gbt for example i think kind of goes back several months and, and years but not what it is today. So I think it's going to keep advancing and I'm hoping it's a compliment, a tool, but I do think um, there will be probably some, some writing jobs that certain companies will see could be um, where maybe, maybe they could use chat GBT or AI and chat GBT and things like that. Um, but I still think that there's a lot of need for real reporting real, um, those real communication skills that are needed that AI just won't be able to do, at least not now. Well, clearly, you know, you have these longstanding relationships in the UK. These are people to people relationships. Mm -hmm. They are delicate. They are high level, the highest levels. I mean, when the royal family moves, the whole world turns and pays attention. So you can't just put that in the hands of an AI. This right. is human relationship yes. built over many years mm -hmm. um, to, to follow what the family is doing. Uh, a lot of, a lot of good questions here. Kathy asked a question. Do you, do you have photographers on your staff? What oh, is that side of it? Absolutely. So we have a lot of different kind of um, photo needs. We have photo editors who every time, like you see in a story we do, um, we'll need to research a photo that we use for um, a, on, a, on one of our stories and to cut it in Photoshop where it needs to be to, so yes, we have that. We have actual photographers we use to shoot um, ex photo, photos for us and um, layouts for us for the magazine as well as for online. So yeah, we work with a lot of photographers and I love working with our photo editors. Um, they're so creative. And I think photos tell just as, just, are just important as the words in, in a lot of ways um, to really bring a story to life. And that's, that was part of my draw to a magazine in general are the photos. And yeah. um, I think their photojournalism is, is incredible and can, I mean, there's a reason they say a picture can tell a thousand words. And if people is de definitely the print version is known for big, bold photos, mm -hmm. the words are around it, but your eyes are drawn to the images. And I know that's, yeah. that's by it's design. A, it's sort of it's sort of a, a funny um, thing when I so when I go to make a like this was my most recent cover 
um, that we did, and I'll I'll try to find it um, in here and show you guys a little bit of how this. Yes, take us inside yeah. the process. So you see, it's a it's a six page story, which you might think like, oh, I have six pages to that I'm gonna write. I'm gonna put so much stuff in here, but the first two, this is the first two, and it's really it's a photo. Um, yeah. And and uh, so the we work with the with the photo team and the layouts, and we talk about um, what pictures we want to use to tell a story, and then um, my sort of job is to make sure that I. Um, write an interesting enough story that uh, goes along with, and the photos complement it. And a lot of the times I run into an issue where I have way more words than I have space because we want such big photos. Um, but I think they really make the story, like it grabs your attention. You want to see, you want to then read read the story, but then see it kind of come to life in the photos. So it's just a, a fun collaborator, collaborative effort um, and it's something that I did ever since I was on yearbook staff in middle school, putting together layouts, um, mm. with different photos and, and piecing the words together. We use much more archaic system than what you guys have now in middle school and high school, but it's the same premise as putting it like putting together a puzzle. And it's, and it's really fun and creative. From middle school yearbooks to <laughs> every grocery aisle, and, yeah, that's right. um, you know, pharmacy, <laughs> Does it ever get old seeing your work in print like that, knowing that it's being read by millions of people, perhaps that several thousand, if not millions? Is that does it ever get old? It really, it really doesn't. I'm so, I, I it's like a pinch me moment every time. I was in the supermarket with um, my daughter, my three year old daughter, the other week, and I saw this there, and she's too young to know that I I did this, but it's like this is moment. I'm like that. Hey, there, there it is. That's <laughs> I mean. right there. Raise your uh, hand if you think that's cool. If she's <laughs> writing something that the whole country, if not other countries, are seeing. I think that is And I kind of want to tell amazing. like the woman at the register, like, you know, this is, I did this. <laughs> right. And she'll be like, yeah, right. Yeah, so did right. I. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it too. Nice try. <laughs> right. It's like uh, they can't appreciate. And even if they knew it was you, they would never know what it took <laughs> to get that to print, to get it on newsstands. Yeah. You're helping us understand it's what it's a really takes. exciting process, and it's one sadly that is, and you know, it's a a little bit of a dying art, the print print media. But I think there are a few of us publications are still hanging on. But it is a really fun process. We close our magazines. Our deadlines are every Monday. Every Monday night, we put one of these together, and then they're on supermarket shelves in the next couple of days. Right. And we work up until two, three a.m. some nights on Mondays. If there's a breaking news story that happens. Monday morning. Oh, it's got to go in. It's got to go in. So we're, it's a, it's a real fun, pa fast paced breaking news can be very stressful, but very rewarding. Amazing. Um, we're coming up on our time. Want to keep, we, we keep everybody back to their school day. Um, I want to thank Erin for her time. Can I see some hands up as a show of thank you and like zoom hands? We can't really clap, but I thought this is just fascinating. I mean, I've known you a while, but I don't know everything, you know, what's <laughs> going on back there. And I've worked in newspapers and things, but it, this is a different beast. And it um, is, yeah, I, it, it is. Fascinating. I think, thanks, Danny. And I hope that some of, I know there's people on here who have lots of different interests and, and interest in going so many different um, careers and industries. But I think some of the basic skills of like communication, kind of putting yourself out there. I think anytime you can be vulnerable in your life in general, this may be a little more like life advice than career Please, advice. We love that too. Anytime you can be vulnerable, you're going to see the payoff. We're all humans and we all have the, the same things we're kind of going through and dealing with. And I think people respond the most to people who are vulnerable. And that is so many different ways, whether it's putting yourself out there and asking somebody in a, you know, to help you out with something or um, something that you're kind of scared of doing, but just taking a leap. And I think people that see you take that, you know, vulnerable step will respond to it and, um, and help you out along the way. And don't be afraid to ask somebody to, to mentor you. I think that's the greatest compliment somebody can get in their career, in their life to have some younger person look to them and and want to do what they do and learn from them. And I think you're gonna find a lot of people, just the simple question of being asked if they can be your mentor will, will respond positively. 
incredible. Really, uh, some of the best advice we've heard in here just there. That's why in my TV news hat, I turned off my screen share so we could <laughs> just have you on camera saying these things because it's so true and it's so important. You are proof that if you do, if you all do what she just said, who knows where you might go? Mm-hmm. She showed yeah, her vulnerability yeah. and now she's not, she's the head of the Royal Family editorial team for People Magazine. Mm-hmm. Say no more. Um, I do want to finish with what I mentioned at the beginning. If you would like free classroom access to our email etiquette teaching tool called Propel, and here's how, here it is, and if a student calls you brah, it tells them not to do it, and it catches all kinds of other slang and mistakes, but it puts it, this work on the students to fix it, okay? This is your one last freebie opportunity here. Go to the chat right now, click on that Calendly link, book time with our team, and we will give you this tool to share with your students, and you will see. Judy, well, that's a conversation for a, a, another time with <laughs> Fairfax County. We Yes, we are working on incorporating the tool to Fairfax and many other school systems. We want the students to use it. We want them to improve how they write so they could open a door like Aaron once did and put their own career on a different trajectory. So again, please take advantage of this free opportunity. Thank you, Aaron. Thank Incredible you. conversation. This will be available on YouTube shortly. You'll get, uh, we'll send an email about it to our community. Thank you for the sign language interpretation. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. We will see you in two weeks. We'll be talking to a, a pretty hard turn from today, an HVAC technician. Nice. <laughs> we really important. jump around. Very important. Part. Yeah, also very yeah. important. And so, communi- you definitely need communication skills for that. <laughs> no doubt. So we'll see you all in two weeks' time. Ch- check your emails for the RSVP link. And thank you for being here today. Thank you, Aaron, very much. Thanks.